Well, hello everybody and thanks again for joining us for another edition of SpinCast. Today, we have Taryn McCarty joining us from Nerd Street Gamers. They are a production company basically based out of the Philadelphia area, but I'll let Taryn really get into all the details there. But uh, before we begin, I just wanted to say thank you so much for joining us today. How are you today? I'm doing well. Thanks so much for having me. All right. That's great. Well, tell us a little bit about you, how you got started in the esports space, if you will, what kind of led you here. And then obviously with Nerd Street Gamers, obviously you have a position there and kind of what it is and what you do. Sure. So my background is a little untraditional in terms of esports. Um, I started actually with Groupon when they were basically a startup. Um, I was like employee 150 at that point. So not true, true startup. Um, but I was able to see the true expansion of that company and then um, grew with them for a year or two um, before moving on to a more traditional advertising role in the publishing space. Um, so from there, I missed that startup feel. Um, I went to a couple of other different startups in the advertising field. Um, and then over the last summer, I was able to take a step back from my last role and say like, what is an industry that I'm really passionate about that I believe that I can use the skills that I've gotten from advertising and help make a difference. And I met the, the team at, at uh, Nerd Street Gamers and I was like, I understand exactly what they're doing. Um, I believe exactly what they're doing as well in terms of breaking the barrier in entry to getting into esports. Mm -hmm. Cool. So that's a logical question. Then it'll lead me into tell me a little bit about Nerd Street Gamers. Exactly what is it that they do? What's their forte? How do they help this space? Yeah, so at Nerd Street Gamers, our purpose is to create the infrastructure of competitive opportunities to mirror the traditional opportunities that sports athletes have nowadays. So, you know, if you're a kid in high school and you want to play on a soccer team, um, you have a number of different routes that you can do that. Um, with esports, the only thing that's really de been developed is professional. So at Nerd Street, we, we really try and focus on the amateur level. Um, and we do that through a couple of different ways. We have um, events. So right now with COVID-19, we've transferred all of our in-person events into online events. But before that, um, we have what we call local hosts, which are land centers where um, anyone can come and play um, on high-end PCs. Um, we have two locations in Philadelphia, one at the Wells Fargo Center where the 76ers and the Flyers play. And then we have another one um, in North Third Street, which is actually where Nerd Street came. Um, which is a whole different story in itself. Uh, but besides that, we have a 20,000 square foot facility in Denver. Um, that one is a little bit more of our traditional like homester, like in terms of we have a giant stage there, we have events constantly. Um, and then we also have a Huntington Beach location. So our last round of capital was raised with Five Below as our lead investor. Um, and we'll be in 70 locations with them in the next uh, four years. Awesome. Awesome. I hear a lot of, go ahead. Sorry. No, I was just going to say, and then also besides uh, our facilities and our events, um, we also have lobby.gg, which is our ticketing platform. Um, and then we also have, as you mentioned, our nsg.tv, which is our production. Um, we, we just actually produced a couple of different things for ESPN this past weekend. And, um, you know, everyone is, is starving for content at the moment, uh, mm -hmm. especially with the lack in sports. I, I see it um, even with myself. I mean, I was very excited for the NFL draft. Never mind. Um, uh, yeah. <laughs> Understood. We're all, whoever can get on television first is going <coughs> to be yeah. very, uh, beneficial for it. Um, exactly. So a couple quick things off of that. Nerd Street Gaming, you bring up a good point. I was at a conference and I was wondering how they come up with the name Nerd Street. And then as I looked at North Third Street, if anyone in the audience just writes that out, N Third Street, you'll get it. Um, pretty cool name. But obviously they do quite a bit in this space. And one of the things I like in specific, uh, you mentioned, for example, um, the opportunity with Five Below and bringing really a lot of uh, social aspect into the gaming world because I think most parents look at this as you know my son or daughter is kind of in the room and they're gaming and who are they gaming with versus yep. live and in person so once we get through this COVID-19 you know I think that's a, a huge opportunity in this space because I, I personally as a parent myself would much rather see my kids go somewhere and make friends and be social while playing these games 
versus staying home all the time. Obviously, there could be a pretty good balance there. So, um, absolutely. And I think to to mm-hmm. kind of go off of your point, that's our whole thing is we we know the power of esports and we truly believe in it. But we want there to be as much opportunity in this space for not only kids but parents to go to. I think um, our Wells Fargo Center is a really good opportunity to look at a case study like that where you know a parent wants to bring his kid to the 76ers game and they see the local host and and they're dragging their parent in and once you see that interaction between the parent and child and seeing that it's a little bit more than just a video game um you could really see the everything start to click i think you had mentioned that in our call earlier in terms of that was something that had to click for you too yeah no doubt about it i think most parents again they kind of look at it as Uh, for lack of a better way of putting it, just kind of almost a waste of time, right? My kid's doing this when ultimately they should be doing this, this, or the other. Um, When I investigated it deeper, then I started to really understand that there's really so many different pathways and opportunities on a topic that my son is incredibly passionate about. So why not foster that? Why not look into how can we take advantage of that um, specifically so that he can have some additional career opportunities or collegiate opportunities as he got older. Um, and that's worked out pretty well for us both versus where we were a couple years back. So that's good stuff. Um, yeah, absolutely. I think um, in terms of the organic growth of the company too, um, Nurtree was actually built out of Jarvis Innovations, which is, mm-hmm. um, you know, Nurtree was kind of an incubator in, in, they were a company in the incubator there and they would run events on the weekends just with friends and they saw the need um, to host these more like frequently. Um, So the center where they actually had Jarvis, they kicked everyone out and made that the first local host, which is on North third street, hence the nerd street. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. Well, I like it again, because you see so many companies coming into this space right now, um, which is logical because obviously it is, a booming industry, but I know you guys have been doing it for a while and have really established your name. And that's someone that people can rely on and say, this is probably going to be either a, a good quality event, or it's going to be a location that we can go and trust. Um, so that's certainly good to see that growth in this space for you guys. Uh, other than pro, most people think of, you know, as a gamer, uh, Hey, I want to go pro. This is what I love to do. I want to do this for the rest of my life. Even in real sports, we know that that's kind of a a pipe dream for most people. But tell me about different opportunities from a career path perspective that you see in the esports world. Uh, Go ahead. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think a lot of people, like you were saying, think, um, you know, just a pro is is kind of the first um, level in terms of getting in esports. But um, from our perspective in our company, we're building it out in every single department. Um, I'm in business development personally, but we also have our infrastructure. So our facilities that constantly we're going to be building and and expanding as rapidly as possible. Um, We also have our production team. So they're constantly helping, you know, like I had mentioned, We had worked with a few people this past weekend. Um, They're also producing podcasts regularly, and we're also helping constantly the different events in terms of being produced. Um, Our events team is another classic example of that. Um, We actually did all of the T1 um, Fusion homestand for the Philadelphia Fusion, um, which unfortunately had to be cut uh, early this year. Um, But you know, our events team has done a really good job of turning everything in person online. And I don't think we see that as being the long-term goal, but it was good to give um, everyone something to do while everyone's at home right now, right? Yeah, no doubt about it. Um, And then we also have our marketing team. um, And yeah, for us too, since we are in the infrastructure space, we see hospitality as as a huge opportunity. Yeah, no doubt. No doubt. That's fantastic. Again, there's so many different avenues kids can pursue in a field that they're passionate about that it's, it's just, you know, amazing to me how much this space has grown, especially over the last five years, which kind of leads me to my next question. If you were to flash forward a few years, how do you see this space continuing to evolve and where do you see Nerd Street's place in the esports space? So from a nursery perspective, I see us um, expanding rapidly, not only in terms of infrastructure and having many different facilities all over the nation, but I see more online events becoming regular. Um, 
you know, I think that this is COVID has really thrown a, a wrench in people's plans on a daily basis. And I think that um, the ability to kind of engage and involve with people all over the nation is extremely important. Um, so we're really lucky that I was able to, that we were able to transfer that. Um, and then in terms of esports, I just see it expanding more and more rapidly. Um, we're getting into the camps um, from an events standpoint too. So making sure that kids have opportunities in terms of camps. Um, and then also in terms of um, advertising, I think you're going to see a huge expansion. You can see some of the players starting to get involved now, yep. and that's just going to start rapidly expanding once you see not only the power of esports, but the power of the demographic that they're trying to reach. It's not a typical demographic. Um, they're not turning on CNN and reading the news. Um, they want to engage with their friends in a way that's easy and accessible. Um, and esports is a perfect prime example for that. Yeah, no doubt about it. And probably not a bad thing that they're not turning on CNN in these <laughs> in these days. But, no, uh, not at all. <laughs> but I think, you know, what? you bring up advertising and sponsorship, for example. I think this is a unique industry in which a lot of sponsors have caught on that when they've got a player or a content creator advertising that product, it's because they're actually using it. Um, I know Team Envy, they're based out of Dallas. You know, they uh, have Jack in the Box as a sponsor. And when you go onto one of their streams, you probably in their house, you probably see a bunch of players eating Jack in the box. Whereas if LeBron James, for example, was a Jack in a box um, endorser, I don't know that you'd actually see him kind of going out there. So from a sponsorship perspective and advertising, you know, it's a win-win because that product is actually being utilized and used by a number of these uh, streamers, production groups, et cetera. So. Absolutely. And nowadays with everyone being at home, what better way to produce your or promote your product than literally people are sitting in their own home. They're vulnerable. They're looking to engage with a specific audience and a specific community and you're able to directly reach out to them with your product. Um, so I, I've seen it done a number of elegant ways this past month, which has been great. Yeah, no doubt about it. So let's go back to the time frame where we could all go outside and gather in groups and things of that nature. At that point, what would you say was your, or currently is your favorite part of your job on a day-to-day -day basis? Sure. So um, my direct role is working with universities and colleges and coming up with their esports infrastructure and events plan. Um, and I really enjoy doing that because um, at Nerd Street, we're incentivized towards helping universities and colleges build these local hosts on campus. And that does a number of things, right? So our local hosts not only have these computer land pits, but they have a staging area and we also have a production studio. Um, so when you think about it from a holistic standpoint in terms of university, you think about it as um, a classroom setting. So not only are we building these land centers where kids can come and have that engagement um, with esports from a positive light, but during the day they're able to, the college and university is able to use that as a classroom. Um, so maybe it's game design or perhaps it's incorporating uh, streaming into a communications broadcast journalism class. You know, coming up with a little bit more of these robust programs with universities is really exciting to me because frankly, we're building our future workforce. Like you were saying, you're, you know, you got excited that your son is perhaps going to take a spot in career in esports. Mm -hmm. And what better way than learning a little snippet of that in college? Um, there are certain universities that have leaned extremely forward in it and have majors. And I think that's great, um, but it's obviously not for every university. So my exciting part is getting to work with these giant universities and, and not only seeing um, their plans and kind of what the students have done, um, but seeing how the bigger picture is and kind of seeing that whole plan come together. That's awesome. Yeah, no doubt about it. That's incredibly helpful for that scene, certainly. I'm sure it's eye-opening for a number of the people you speak to. Um, yeah. So that's, that's fantastic to see. Well, we are just about up on time, but I, want to do, I do want to thank Taryn today for coming in and joining us from Nerd Street Gamers. Obviously, you're doing phenomenal work in this space. I look forward to seeing that continue to grow, certainly. I think it's good for everyone involved. I know Nerd Street does a phenomenal job, uh, and hopefully we can re reconnect down the road a little bit, just kind of see how things are going and, and kind of go from there. But uh, again, I sincerely do appreciate your time today. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. And if um, anyone wants to reach out and, and ask about any potential career opportunities or um, wants to read a little bit more about the company, we're nerdstreetgamers.com. 
Easy enough. That's N-E-R-D streetgamers.com. So again, sincerely do appreciate it. Hope you have a fantastic day. Stay safe and uh, hopefully we'll all get back to some sort of normalcy sooner than later. So we appreciate <laughs> Thank it. You Thank you for you. having me. You got it.